Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're comparing a Ford Bronco to a Land Rover Defender. Now, I picked the most hardcore off-road package for the Bronco that is available that's not a Bronco Raptor, and then I picked the most hardcore off-road package that's available for the Defender that's not a V8 Defender, and so I feel like these vehicles are as comparable as it gets. Don't worry, I'll be making more comparisons in the future. Once I review a Bronco Raptor and actually drive it, and then once I review a V8 Defender, and actually drive it, and then I'll be able to kind of splice that comparison up in the future. Uh, but for the time being, we're gonna compare these two vehicles against each other. Before I get into the comparison though, I do wanna mention that my car buying course is available for sale. So if you wanna save time money the next time you purchase a car, link to that in the description down below. Let's get into the comparison. Starting things off by going onto the hood of the Defender, we have a turbocharged three liter inline six that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. It's good for 395 horsepower and then 406 pound feet of torque. There is a turbocharged four cylinder and then a supercharged V8 also available for the Defender, but this is the most popular engine so far. Now, moving over to the Bronco, we have a turbocharged 2.7 liter V6, goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 330 horsepower and then 415 pound feet of torque. Uh, so, although they have similar uh, torque figures, horsepower is uh, greater over on the Defender side of things. Now, here is the key fob for the Defender itself. Uh, definitely a cool aesthetic uh, with the key fob. Nice, you can turn the lights on with the fob, which definitely adds practicality for nighttime stuff and then you can see there with the accenting on the hood and then also in the center with the 110 logo i thought that's so cool defender logo down below with the land rover logo and then you can see here with the lights super bright you do have the uh, accent lighting around that as well fog light down below and then you can see parking sensors on the front end and then by the way with this aggressive front end we have 8.5 inches of ground clearance as standard if you get air suspension 11.5 inches at the highest ride height setting now popping over to the bronco first edition now they haven't really made a ton of changes for the 2022 model year you obviously can't get a first edition anymore but if you get like a fully loaded badlands for 22 it's the same thing as a first edition basically anyways you can see the bronco logo there with the camera in the center and you have the aggressive off-road bumper which uh, definitely has a, just such a cool aesthetic from the factory it's crazy you can get something like that from the factory nowadays tow hooks there at the bottom and then you guys can see here with the bilstein shocks now this has 11.5 inches of ground clearance period there's no air suspension or anything so yeah if you get a bronco with the sasquatch package you're gonna have 11.5 inches of ground clearance which is phenomenal uh, and that's just all the time right you don't have to do any air suspension to get up to that point now popping back over to the defender uh, you can see you've got uh, pretty large uh, wheels here we've got 20s in the front and the rear uh, you do have more aggressive all-terrain tires as well and then you can see the front suspension there with the defender um, but they have that like old school off-roader type look uh, with the wheel design which i think is so cool got the mud flaps front and rear and then notice the cladding there on the side as well uh, it's kind of like protection right and again it gives it that off-roader look and then it has the snorkel that's part of the this uh, package on the defender which uh, it's again the fact you can get that from the factory and it looks it looks really interesting and also when you're driving you can actually hear it taking in air which is another cool aspect of this package that you can actually hear the airflow coming in uh, go watch my video on this defender if you guys want to hear that now popping over to the bronco we've got more of like a regular off-roader setup so we've got 17 inch wheels 35s front and rear so definitely a much more aggressive uh, setup and uh, the wheels are beadlock capable and then you can see again with the tire tread there and then the front suspension um, both vehicles have independent front suspension if you guys are wondering got the rock rail and then you can see there with the trim on the side and then you got your first edition logo and then the blacked out mirrors that also come with the first edition and then hard top which you can remove that's another distinct thing with the bronco is that uh, you can remove the top on the bronco and then going over to the tire and wheel there in the rear you guys can see that whole setup um, and then the bronco still does utilize a solid rear axle doesn't have independent rear suspension you can see the tow hook there at the back wheel recovery hook 
Uh, anyways, opening here with the Defender. Notice it's got the swing out uh, tailgate, which is definitely cool. Uh, but it's all attached with the window and everything, so you don't have to like flip up a window, as you guys can see with the hand motion I did there, like with a Bronco or a Wrangler. And you can see the floor mats that come with it. Definitely a cool aesthetic on those. Uh, tons of storage space here in the back, and then you can see underneath there's even more storage space as well. And notice with the surfaces, they make it so it's really easy to clean off. So if you do get the interior dirty, um, it kind of makes that uh, easier. And then you can see you've got like the climate control thing there for the rear, which is uh, interesting because you can get a third row on the Defender if you guys are wondering. That's why they have that whole uh, setup back there. And another cool thing is you've got the like skylights in the Defender. Definitely, you know, just, I don't know, it gives it a cool feeling. It's hard to explain. You just have to see it in person. And then finishing things up with the rear, definitely has that cool, like large box of design, similar to the Mercedes J, G Wagon. I said J Wagon, can't even talk today. Uh, I got the Defender logo down below, and then you can see the LED lights. Um, but yeah, this, this basically looks very similar in terms of profile and everything to the G Wagon, which I don't think is a bad thing. It's a really good look uh, for the Defender. And then notice everything there at the top. Now, here's the key fob for the Bronco. I can see it doesn't have as many functions as what the Defender key fob has, but you know, still practical. Now, this has two compression points to open up the uh, tailgate part. So you have to like press it, press it multiple times and you can see it fully opens. And then you open up the window just like the Jeep Wrangler. And you can see here, these are the bags to store the top and everything's labeled, which definitely helps out. And then notice you got some storage space underneath, not nearly as like, big as we have over the defender but you know it's practical we've got a 12 volt back here uh, no third row available with the bronco just so you guys know and then you can take the top off like i said earlier so notice that you've got that body painted uh, so that's exposed when the top is off and uh, closing the uh, rear is very easy with the bronco now finishing things up here with the rear again this has kind of more of that jeep wrangler aesthetic uh, with everything um, so Notice you've got the spare tire there on the back, just like the Defender, but it doesn't have a cover like the Defender. And it's got that like more lifted look rather than the lower down look that the Defender has appearance wise. But popping here to the interior of the Defender, it, I love the color combination on this uh, with like the cream color in contrast to the blue on the exterior. I uh, notice material use throughout the Defender, very nice, very premium. Again, this is from a luxury manufacturer, so it has more of a luxury appearance to it. Uh, but notice that uh, the seats would actually be pretty easy to clean off with the surfaces. And here's a quick look at space. Uh, space between them with the second row is actually pretty similar. If you guys are wondering with both of the vehicles, and you guys will be able to see that in just a moment. I know it's got the cup holder armrest situation. Again, I love that skylight. It just, I don't know, it, it just makes the interior in a sense. But popping back over to the Bronco. Notice that, you know, you've got some nice materials, but it's not as like luxury looking as the Defender, uh, but it definitely has a like durable, uh, you know, look to it. And uh, I remember this is the Bronco that it was my first station that I ordered, but it had the broken headrest from the factory, <laughs> got fixed, but it was kind of funny. Uh, notice you've got the window controls there in the center. You've got the charging ports, no vents though for the back passengers. And uh, again, like I said, room back there is super uh, similar in terms of like legroom and everything. But here's a front door panel on the Defender. So it still has that like utilitarian appearance to it with everything. But again, just the material use looks a little bit nicer. The design on it looks a little bit more premium as well. And you see the mirrors right there and the speakers for the sound system. And then notice here with the front seats, again, really cool appearance. Uh, and then you've got some adjustments there on the side of the seat and then the pedal layout just down below. And then notice again with the padding right there, you've got the grab handle to help out with getting in, which is great. And then popping over to the Bronco again, uh, again, same thing with the door panel. And this one's got the blue interior, which is definitely unique. You can see the mirrors that are attached, not to the door, but to the body. And then here are the front seats again. The contrast with the blue and the gray, I think looks great. Power adjustments there on the side of the seat. You can see the pedal layout down below and then light control as well. And then also got a grab handle, just like on the Defender. Very uh, similar with that whole setup right there. Now, starting up the Defender, got this cool animation with the full digital screen, as you can see. And here's the steering wheel. So uh, you can see the padding all around the steering wheel, and then you've got the darker stitching there on the center portion. And uh, it does come with like cruise control, and then you got the controls for the center stack. Of course, we got our turn signal windshield wiper stocks, which again, material use in them, very high quality. And then here is the center gauge cluster, again, full digital gauge cluster that's 
Uh, available in other Land Rover models. So if you've been in another Land Rover, this will be a very familiar setup uh, to you. And yeah, I think they've done a great job with the animation. It's super user-friendly, shows a bunch of different vehicle information, pretty easy. Now as for the infotainment system, there's different screens you can get. Most defenders I've seen have had the smaller screen, which is this screen. And uh, I, I'm fine with it, right? Response time's great. Notice you got the camera system. You got your on-road and off-road modes for the camera system, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you're, you're covered with the cameras. You got camera angles out of uh, most points that you're going to need if you're going to do some off-roading with it. And notice that it even show you like your elevation, which is cool, right? If you're going to do an off-road location, you want to know how high you've climbed up to. So I think that's great. And then notice with the weight sensing, there's just a lot of off-road tech with the Defender. It's taken like this, you know, new, new school attacky approach to everything. And then you see you've got heated and ventilated seats. So again, more on the luxury side of things uh, from that. And then dual zone climate as well. And then you can see you can change like the fan speed with that button. And then we've got the drive mode select on the other side. It's kind of interesting that that's how you change the drive modes. Um, but notice again, you've got like a normal and comfort and eco, and then grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, sand, and then rock crawl. It's all, you know, most of the modes are dedicated to off-roading. That's kind of like a Land Rover thing, which I think is pretty cool that they've stuck to that with the brand. And then, you know, you've got normal stuff like hill descent control, low range, all that. And then the shifter for that eight speed automatic transmission. And then notice all the storage space here with the charging ports. And then you can see just how like sturdy everything looks. You got grab handles everywhere, right? You need that if you're going to be doing some hardcore off-roading in the Defender. And then here's with the center console. You can get a refrigerator center console. And that's a wireless phone charger. And then you see storage space up there. It says Defender. And um, again, more grab handle. But it's covered in leather, of course, right? Got to have that. And then glove box, pretty normal. Nothing too crazy happening with that. And then... Regular vehicle, so you've got like panoramic sunroof, and again, you can't take off the doors of the roof, uh, so a little bit of a different setup. But here's a window sticker, so you can see the equipment on this, and also the pricing as well. So notice the base price there, which is pretty much the well, you guys will see with the Bronco, um, but this one has the Explorer pack that's like the off road pack. Uh, for there's like the X dynamic and everything, but the, the Explorer pack's like the true like off-roader pack for the Defender right now. And uh, so if you're if you want like off-road from the factory, I'd recommend you know going for that package. And as we can see now, total MSRP there seventy-seven thousand, a little bit over seventy-seven thousand dollars. And popping back to the Bronco now. Oh, so, cool animation here with the screen, and you can see again pretty digital. But here's the steering wheel, so. We've got the padding all around, and then you've got practical, well, stitching down the center, but practical controls on the steering wheel itself. And you notice cruise control. So, you know, that's pretty similar with both of the vehicles. But again, notice the material use with everything. It's a little bit more on the, you know, basic side of things, right? And then again, digital screen here, but you do have the analog gauge there off to the side. So it's not all screen, like what you have with the Defender, and then notice how you can change kind of like the screen view depending on what menus you scroll through, which I think is a pretty cool feature of the Bronco. And then we have a ton of uh, different drive modes, but notice you got the calm screen with it too. So if you just want it to be uh, right calm, you don't want a ton of information shown, then that's kind of what that will do for you. And it's always interesting when you're revving it up because how they have the RPM screen and like how it goes, the bar goes up. It's it's different. It's it's definitely unique. I will say that. And overall, I think that Ford's done a pretty good job uh, with the screen itself in terms of uh, how that's set up. Now it's got the stabilizer bar disconnect, front and rear lockers, got the trail turn assist, stability control, and then we've got the hazard lights there at the uh, top. And so again, if you get a bad land, you can get all those same features. Big 12 inch display, so the infotainment system is larger. I feel like the infotainment system is more nicely integrated here too. It doesn't look like it's plopped into the dash like the Defender. This is like part of the dash. And then camera system, right? Pretty similar. You've got like 360 camera views here. Resolution's great. So I wouldn't say that one has a better camera system over the other. I feel like they're both just solid uh, camera systems overall. And so I you know, don't have any complaints with that. You can see the F-150 going through. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, response time's great. It's easy to use, has a split screen function. And if you're, the thing about Ford is they use this throughout all their vehicles, just like Land Rover uses that infotainment system through all their vehicles. So you're kind of used to it if you've been in other Fords. Dual zone climate, heated seats, no cold seats though. And then notice the wireless phone charger there at the front. And notice you got your first edition logo 
with this one. And then you can see the shifter for the 10 speed automatic transmission. And then we have our goat mode select with the drive line select. Notice it has four wheel auto as well as four wheel high. All the window controls, the mirror adjustments as well. You can see the cup holders and then the center console set up right there. Good storage space. And then glove box, pretty normal setup. And then notice there's like not a grab handle like on the Defender there on the glove box. And then you can see here at the top, again, you can take the top off. You got the six auxiliary switches, which is another nice feature here with the Bronco. But, uh, you know, top off driving, that might be a, a big appeal to a lot of you is being able to have that convertible action where you can take the top off, you can take the doors off. And, you know, so far, again, we don't have a Defender that uh, you can do that as of right now, maybe uh, Land Rover will change that in the future. Who knows? But it does have the insulation there at the top. You can see stuff falling out from the insulation, dust and everything. But uh, going back to the drive modes, notice we got a normal, eco, slippery, mud ruts, sand, Baja, and then rock crawl. Uh, so, you know, similar from a drive mode perspective, in a sense, uh, the Defender didn't have a Baja mode, but, you know, again, similar enough with the drive modes between both of them. And then here is the window sticker. Now, the price for the 2022 Broncos has gone up slightly. Um, so like a fully loaded Bronco for 2022 Badlands. So same package as this pretty much, but just not the special edition. It's like 64, 65, whereas this is $62,000. Uh, so yeah, fully summing things up with this comparison. Uh, again, from a price point perspective, again, if we assume 2022 Bronco were like $64,000 roughly versus 77 on the Defender. So there is a big price difference, but again, the Defender is more luxury and it, again, it's really just going to depend on what you're going to uh, be looking for. If you want a luxury experience with a vehicle that is capable um, offered, again, if you get air suspension with a Defender, it has just as much ground clearance as the Ford Bronco. So off-road capability is there, and really all you'd need to do with the Defender is just switch out the tire and wheel setup for, you know, 17s or 18s, whatever the uh, brake rotors will let you fit, and then do more aggressive tires. I'm sure you could easily fit 33s, if not maybe even 35s. I don't know. Let me know if I'm wrong, but maybe you could fit 35s on the Defender. But regardless, the point that I'm trying to make is the Defender is like a great daily driver and then it has some off-road capability so you can do some fun stuff on the weekend the bronco isn't as nice of a daily driver it still is a great daily driver but not as nice as the defender but then it is more capable uh, off-road again from the factory it's got a better tire and wheel setup it's got the stabilizer bar disconnect right front and rear lockers like there's a lot that goes into that and it i mean that's just a crawling machine from the factory and again you have that convertible experience whereas with the defender you don't and so if you're debating between both of the vehicles, uh, again, here's what I have to say. If you want to have a really nice luxury car that has a cool off-roader aesthetic that you can do some off-roading with that you're not really gonna go crazy all out. You're just gonna have some fun on some trails. The Defender will do that. If you're gonna want to go a little bit more and if you wanna have that you know, top off experience and you, you're gonna wanna just push a little bit off road, that's what the Bronco will give you with the added off road capability. Again, you give up some daily drivability and some luxury for that extra off road capability. So you just gotta figure out where you sit.